So feel free to ask questions. This, this conversation is um, not, um, not a uh, introductory converse, in, 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 in conversation tonight. Okay, I'm going to talk about some philosophy, which I always do, of course, um, but uh, which is what we're going to do first. Okay, so, you know, I, I, I love to talk about, um, <laughs> I, I tell my patients all the time, I said, listen, I know what I say to you makes a lot of sense, She's, because people say yeah, that makes sense. I said, and I know that I'm nagging you, okay, and I said, the only reason I nag you is because I am talking for God's team, okay, is to empower the human body. And everybody else that you've been to is going, is man's team, okay? So I'm, on God, I'm God's cheerleader, okay? So I'm God's cheerleader also for chiropractic, I believe, and what we really are capable of doing. Um, I was driving by a chiropractic office yesterday on the way home, and he has like one of those little you know, signs that are outside, like, you know, uh, you know, a diner that says, you know, $3 special for this kind of thing, blue plate. He's got a little thing there, and it says on it, weight loss uh, something, okay? And I just shook my head, you know, and I, and I shake my head because I know what happens and what can can happen, and it doesn't happen on everybody, but what can happen when you actually understand uh, the way the human body is made, and it's made in a way that we don't look at it, and no other technique really expresses itself. It's, it, there are a couple techniques that talk about tensegrity, okay, but there is only one that actually has a measurable system that looks at the biomechanics and the flow of structure and function, okay? And that big balloon, okay, we're not bones, we're a balloon system with bones inside that give us the ability to move and form and all kinds of stuff, okay? It's simple to see. And, and when that thing gets damaged, just like a big balloon, you poke holes in it, it's, it, it starts breaking down in some pattern, okay? And everybody has some pattern, and there is not a replicated pattern of anybody, it's like a signature, it's like a fingerprint, okay? And that, which means that person locks into a place, okay? I mean, think about it, look at that picture there. And if you looked at it, and with, if the muscles were not there, I have a plastic spine in my body, uh, in, my, in my office, and I hold it up and I tilt it over and, and, and the skull bends all the way over to the hip. And I said, you know, if it wasn't for your body locking down, that's where your head would be. Not very productive, okay? The problem with it is that this thing starts caving down and cramping up and it's talking to you, okay? And that, what it does, so that it can move and it can be stable, it creates a lock in a three-dimensional pattern that I call a neurologic lock, okay? And it's there for obvious reason. It's there for stability and flexibility, and it's not made to do that. It's really made to be a flexible system, okay, that moves. All right. So it, when we get out of balance between what tensegrity is, it's a more of an expanding flexible system that is somewhat stable. OK, is and it's not completely stable. Right. And it's not completely flexible. All right. Because the bones and the fascia have have limitations to them. Okay? So so what happens is, is when we, we have those multiple damages and those multiple compensations, the body goes into some type of sacrifice of stability for flexibility, okay? And there becomes a tug-of-war system between tension and compression, okay? So, you know, sides are, 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 are shorter to the ground. They're in compression. Sides that are longer to the ground, just like this pelvis. It's low on the left. It's shorter on the left, and it's longer on the right. It's a compression tension, okay? The fascia is in compression and tension, not the bones, okay? The bones that we see bending are only the air coming out of the balloon and the system is collapsing, so the bones start approximating and bending. Okay. And people come in in various different places with various different symptoms, and they complain to you 
why it's hurting them, okay? And it's hurting them for only one reason, okay? It's out of alignment. There is no other reason, okay? And our purpose is to change that. It's very simple. And we don't do a good job at it, okay? Because we sell weight loss. Hmm. You know, it just blows me away, man. I'm just tired of it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. It's crazy. So, um, you know, <laughs> it, it's so, so here we are, man. You know, it's like 12 people, you know, trying to figure out how to how to help people. And there's thousands of people, you know. Um, I have a good friend of mine who is... Um, went to go get a job interview at a chiropractic office um, today. And, and uh, that person called me and wanted to tell me what, what the office was about. And they said, what's foot levelers? And I said, well, it's, you know, it's an insert. And whether you use that or not is not the point. I said, you know, tell me about the, the office. She said, you know, well, there's a, there's a medical doctor. There is an allergist. There's a chiropractor. There's a massage therapist. There's a PT person. I said, okay. All right. So some of those things don't support the chiropractic purpose. Okay. And that is the body is a self-healing organism. Okay. And if it's not able to self-heal, it doesn't belong in our practice. Okay. Because that, that 5% is for the other guys. We're supposed to take care of 95% of the population with degenerative stuff, okay? And that's what the chiropractic purpose is, is that picture and that picture alone is to be able to understand that three-dimensionally and to change that, okay? That is no doubt, okay? So to do that, we have to start talking about what it is, okay? And not just wh where it is, okay? That bone is out of place. There is degeneration there. There's no curve there. There's a bend here, that hip is low, okay? There is, there is a life force in that thing. It's not really an x-ray, it's a human being that was standing there and is trying to sustain itself that has trauma and the trauma and the nervous system are in some type of relationship where the nervous system is bending the body back from those trauma points, trying to hold it, hold it up. And there's that yin and yang of structure function, structure function all the time and more traumas and more traumas and is more bends back and forth and look at this thing it's it's you see it, it's got a left low hip but look at you know just around uh, let me see if i figure out how i could do a pencil here here you know it's got it's got a you know a left low hip over here did you see that when i did that yeah when i drew that okay good and and what happens is um, instead of it falling over okay it pulls itself up with the musculature on this right side. So this person right here goes to the massage therapist, goes to the chiropractor and says, I got a muscle spasm there, goes to a medical doctor and they get a shot there because that disc is killing them, or they go and get to a chiropractor because that rib is out and they start blasting on this area. And that guy right there is their best friend trying to hold them up. And that person is failing in that position because look at the shoulder, it's even lower on that side. So the whole thing has fallen off into the left frontal plane and the last bit of the writing reflex is trying to hold it up and look at the head, it's turning back and look at the neck, it's just bending and bowing, okay? You can see the muscular change in the neck on the right side as it's pulling the head over. Mm -hmm. see it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. So that is a lot. You're gone. Can you all hear me? Somebody just blocked now out I your mic. You. Yeah, then yeah, you came back. My, yeah, good, because my, I just said I lost the connection. So I apologize. It, I don't know if it's my internet or it's outside, but so I, if I repeat that a couple of times, it's uh, just checking in, okay? But yeah, so, so this, this person is in distress. It's not a bone out of, of place. It's 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 a a balloon that has been damaged, and the bones are just a picture of what the whole thing is trying to do and where it's been damaged. And it's our job to try to understand that in an alive way. Okay, so the way we start doing that 
is we have this postural um, listing and it evaluates this thing in a certain way of what's low in the relationships and there's obviously normal patterns and there are normal biomechanics and there are normal numbers and uh, it's an expression of how the person is tilting off what the configuration of the six floors or six pieces or or components to the body like the legs the pelvis the spine the shoulders the neck and the head and how that thing is holding itself up meaning its literal energetic state of how it is handling certain amount of weight this person has 12 pounds off okay and how it's handling that and and by the rotation and the rotations are counter rotated should rotated which are biomechanically not normal it's over a 10 which is failure and the person is just falling over and they're in trouble okay that comprehension literally in one minute okay in one minute about those six letters and those three numbers okay and those two rotations okay is more than you will learn in chiropractic school about what's going on with this thing. Okay. So why do I say that? Because it's important to understand what's going on if you have a thought about wanting to correct it and help it. Okay. So Okay. <clears throat> So we're going to just dig in a little bit deeper, and that, that is um, they're, they're not, not, the, the whole body is not the same. So the head, when it bends, it has a different reaction than if the pelvis bends, okay? And that's important because if we want to help um, the main areas first, okay, you wouldn't, if, they're, if your house is tilting over and you have a little you know, a little weather vane on the top, you don't bend the weather vane over and think the rest of it's going to come. So, so there are bigger things that you have to take care of, like foundation. Okay. So, um, there are specific areas of posture and there, that change the posture, you know, in a, in a gross way, if you, and that's everything from the shoulders down. And that's really important that you know that, that the shoulders down take care of that everything because it, we can see failure in them and we can also see how the head and neck bend back and forth and that's just writing reflex so and and this this piece is 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 a significant piece is uh, is how you i want to back up for a second because I, I lost my train of thought i'm sorry is from the shoulders down control the posture of the human body if you bend your head left and right it does not lift you it will not change your weight really it's not going to lift your body up and take the strain off the body it's merely to get the eyes on the horizon okay so from the shoulders from the spine from the pelvis and the legs those four components are the components that control posture okay and that's important because i used to adjust the atlas and that's not controlling posture, it's controlling the head and neck. So to understand where the access is into the postural muscles and how to get into them is primary, okay? So posture is a function from the origin insertions and that's the lower extremity up to the shoulders, okay? And the cervicals are not the same, okay? The cervicals don't have the same impact on He cut out. We lost it. We lost you again. Uh, on posture and weight bearing. Are you with me? He, he yeah, we lost you for a minute. Off. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so um, that last slide, the whole the whole schmear on it could be in 30 second is seconds is. If you want to, if you want to take care of posture, you have to move the shoulders, the spine, the pelvis, and the legs. Okay, and I look at those four components. It's not a matter of moving the head and neck; they are not primary. Okay, just move your head and neck. They don't move your body. Okay, and they don't bring your posture up. 
but if you move your shoulders, it changes your posture and it moves and there, there's more of a direct connection there. Okay. So the big question for tonight is if you look at this listing, you got a left low hip, you got a left spine, you have a left shoulder, you got a right neck and you got a right head and you have right weight, which means that in this type of listing, um, how do you have left low hip, left spine, and left shoulder, but have right weight? And the reason is, is because the legs are shifting out to the right. Fair enough? That's where the weight comes in. Okay. So what you have is some of the postural muscles, which is the legs, okay, the pelvis, the spine, and the shoulders, one of them is on the right, three of them are on the left, and then the neck and the head are on the right as well. So you got stuff that's going right, stuff that's going left. If you look at the rotations, you got the big movers, okay? And there's always anterior and posterior rotation, whether it's counter-rotated in the shoulder and pelvis is negligible. There will always be anterior and posterior rotation because, you know, if the shoulder goes backward far enough, the head's gonna bring it forward, okay? Because the head's gonna try to create balance. Okay. So there's always anterior and posterior rotation and there's always left and rights. Okay. The question is, mm -hmm. is in the adjustment, when you adjust on the left, okay, you're kind of going and helping the stuff that's on the left, but what about the stuff that's on the right? You're going into it. You're going into that weakness. And when you're on the right, same idea of only vice versa. Okay. You know, if the building is tilting is tilting over all the way to the left you wouldn't push on it on the right okay well that's not what we have here and and the majority of listings if not all of them okay have counter rights and lefts you know frontal plane and counter rotations okay so this is what i've been looking into is you know and it had to come up at some point that you know you got so many things going on you know, how do you get everything going at the, same, at the same time? How do you get everything going at the same at the same time? How do you get the anteriors going posterior? Okay. And how do you get the posteriors going anterior? How do you right, get the rights going left and the lefts going right? And there's a conversation that we're going to start having that that is very possible. And it's extremely helpful. Okay. Because it's extremely helpful because if you're never going against anything, then you're never breaking anything down, okay? And there are places in the spine, and the way that I'm gonna show you today, that when I touch somebody on one side, everything is coming at me, everything, okay? Does it correct everything or release everything? And the answer may be no. And you say, well, what do you mean everything's coming at you? Well, there's damage, okay? So in an ideal system, I can tell you where to push in the neck on one side or the other and tell you the ideal place, anterior, posterior, right and left, how to get the whole tensity Seagull volume to expand. And that's where we start the conversation tonight. And we've, we started it before, okay? What goes around comes around. Okay, and to do that, to do that, you have to um, realize that um, our linear thinking that we have from the past, okay, that we're going to push a bone, okay, and, and that's pretty much everybody, okay. I'm going to push a bone and that the body is a rigid system. It's a linear system, okay, and I'm going to push on it and it moves the whole thing in one direction. The leaning tower is a leaning over to my right, okay, um, I'm going to push it right to left. It would be perfect. I would never, ever push that thing left. Would you? Never. Okay? Correct. So movement is linear. It's one directional. Okay? You can call it two directional if you want. Right, left, up, down. Okay? But a balloon is different, okay? It's 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 three direct three directional, <laughs> okay? And and you don't push balloons, okay? 
things are going to release in the balloon. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. And everywhere you push, if you see that girl is sitting on the balloon, and everything from where she's pushing, let's just say where she's putting pushing is really where her butt is. Okay, if you notice, there's a depression there, and everything from that point has expanded outward. I saw my thing went off, but then I came back. So, you guys with me? Yes. Yep. Okay. I don't know where I left off, but I said, let's assume that the pressure that this girl is putting in is, is right at her butt, right? That's where the pressure is. So, everything is expanding out from that. That's not the way a building operates, okay? So, the human body can be pushed into and everything can expand from that place. So the question is, is why can't we push anywhere and make the whole thing expand? And the answer is we do push everywhere and the whole thing doesn't expand for you exactly um, why that would be the answer, but to me, is just because we have damage and everything has um, that, that the forces can't go through completely. Okay. So we got to be able to shift our mindset to understand that we're dealing with a balloon concept and not a linear concept. We're not moving things as a rigid body, so to speak, in physics. We're moving things in an elastic system. Okay. So any questions? Clear. What'd you say, Dennis? That's clear. Okay, good, excellent. Okay, so the cervicals are a cool place, okay? They're a, they're a cool place because um, the human body, it, it's, it's, first of all, it's the top, okay? So, you know, if you're gonna move a, a kinetic chain, um, to do that from the top is, uh, one of the best places to do it, okay, to allow forces to travel from one end to another flow, okay? The second thing is, is that the relationship that the head and neck have to the rest of the body is it's the only three-dimensional access point, meaning motion is three-dimensional, meaning where people are breaking down and short, we get to access from the top all like a big circle all the way around okay so we can access everywhere okay not just like the if i if i dealt with the you know if i if i bent the wrist back and forth you know wrist motion is really flexion extension okay for the most part so all i would be doing is accessing those lines so that's different than the head and neck like i can access this, access all three-dimensional lines okay um the other thing is is that um, where I press in the neck and no matter where I press in the neck, and this is a very important thing that you get this, is that everywhere you press in the neck, I don't care if it's C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, you're going to expand the postural muscles, okay? So the, 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 the more exact answer is, though, is that C7 and T1 are, are better. They, they give you more power from that position. You diminish your power as you go up the cervicals to, to change the postural muscle. So if you see where that white arrow is. When I push into that white arrow, I am bringing up the left shoulder and the right shoulder and the spine. Everything is expanding, okay, three-dimensionally like like you push into a balloon, everything is expanding. And that's what you want it to do is expand, okay? So you movement in response to your movement, is that what you're talking about with postural expansion? Yeah, so when you put up, when you put up, when you go in and you, and you push down on C5 and you push down into C7, you are expanding the postural envelope below you, always. Question? Yeah. Regardless of the direction, whether you're going I to S or S to I? 
Yeah, you're expanding the volume no matter what. Okay, thank you. But 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 Brad, going A to go to IS, go to SI, that changes the energy of it. Okay. So yes. So, so well, that's that'd be important. like pushing into a balloon, right? That's right, because you're pushing into a balloon. Okay. Well, Listen, go so push into the neck. In go, go, guys, just go. go look at. Go push into the neck and watch somebody's shoulder. Watch somebody's back. Okay. You you see it all the time. Watch their sweater move. It pulls right up to you. It does it all the way around. Yeah. It doesn't do it on a line. It's a balloon. It's skin, man. Push on it. You'll see every. It's like it. Just like push it. Go push into a balloon. Everything. Everything depresses into that three dimensionally around your finger. The same thing. But I'm going to tell you that at C7, if you want to release the postural muscles, which you want to do, okay, you want to raise the whole thing up, and then you'll deal with the head and neck, and that's where we're going to get to, okay, is you got to release C7 for sure and T1, okay, whoever's the, the VP, okay. The other thing that we get to do here, okay, is we get 3D access, we get three-dimensional expansion of the postural muscles. What we get to do here is we get to use the head like a big, you know, like a like a cue ball that you put in a sock and you bend the cue ball and you can create tension, you know, bend the head down and you create tension in this picture on the upside. You bend the head up, you make tension on the downside and guess what you get to do you could do that three-dimensionally you could turn the head lift it bend it flex it extend it and access three-dimensionally and put tension against it so almost like preloading it so when you get up against it you can release it so there's lots of great options up here okay but here's the rub here's the rub Okay, if that was the case, you would just go in and just start driving all over the place. Okay, but people have injuries in their neck as well. Okay, so we want to be able to expand the postural system below shoulders, spine, pelvis, and legs, and also make sure that we release the neck in the direction that we want it to go. We have a right neck tilt, we want it to go right to left. Okay, we don't want to buckle it left to right. Okay, so you know that's that should be go. Uh, oh, I know, I know where I've kind of heard that idea. I've heard that idea when I was if you did upper cervical work. Okay, so there are six pieces that QSM three uses: head, neck, shoulder, spine, pelvis, legs. Okay, where those people, those predecessors in that era, okay, which is 70 years ago plus, okay had built a model of two sections and they look at not buckling the atlas in that okay so moving right ahead so there's two major bend points okay and it's pretty simple to see that okay uh, because we're going to talk about the neck go ahead and push on c1 okay what does it do to the neck which way does it release it Go ahead and push on C7, and which way does it release it? You see what I'm talking about? Uh, one brings everything up, one brings everything, something Okay, so down. here we go. Here we go. Let's see if I can get a better color here. Here we go. So, okay, so... Listen, we're going to go through a, a pile of these, okay? Uh, try this. Okay, here we go. Dennis, can you see the blue line that I just drew on the bottom? Yes, sir. Okay. So, that is somebody's neck on, on the table, okay? This is where their head is up here. Fair enough? Got it. Okay. Would you press here at C7 
Would you press C1? Well, C1 would buckle that head to the right. I don't care about um, the head. I don't, I'm not okay. asking you about the head. I'm asking you about the neck. Well, Anybody? What do you want to do? I think you want to get it to vertical. Okay. What is the? It's it's short. It's 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 tilting upward. It's let's say we have right side up. The right side adjustment. Which way do you want to release that? It's short on the right. I mean. D seven to C one. Huh? D seven to C one. C seven to C one. I, I want to know. C1. Which is the better place to release it, C1 or C7? C1. C1. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. This is what you'll get if you use C7. That. That's not good. That's a sandwich. This is what you'll get is a release when you have this is to release this that way. Yes. Mm, okay. Dennis, if I had a right head tilt, where would you release that better? Would you, would you release it up here better or would you release it here better? Well, sounds like it'd be C1, correct? No, that would just buckle it further. Oh, head tilt, yeah, right, head tilt. Oh, just the head tilt, I suppose, the, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just that. saying, where's a better leverage point, okay? If you want to mm -hmm. bend something over, you bend it, you're going to bend it over if it's on the same side. We'll go through some of these, you'll see it, okay? All okay. Right. That, that's important that you understand that concept, you know? So, so, and, and if you do, it, and it's very important that you take the head out of the equation, okay? And the, and the reason you're going to do that is because the head can handle it, okay? That joint is, is is made to handle it. C0 to C1 is made for that that flexion. It's made for that that lateral flexion more than anybody, okay? For sure. Okay, that's what it's made for. It, you're, and I have mm -hmm. yet to see any problem with me bending the head in an opposite direction okay but people don't like it when i bend the neck in the right in the wrong direction and you buckle that thing okay so for now Got it. um if, if you if i have a right side up in the picture that we're looking at here can everybody see it that way yes if i had a right neck i would use c1 as a as a better leverage point for my neck and for my postural muscles. And I would also have C7 if I had a left neck, if I had a neck that was bending down like this, and I came in here, okay, it would bend that upward. And you should be able to see that from a balloon model as well. Because everything will come all the way around like this. Remember, it's the first touch. If you have, you, you got to sit on this stuff. To me, it's I, it's plain as day at this point, but uh, we're going to go through this. Okay. I do want to make a couple points here. Okay. I'm talking to you as two points. Okay. First of all, I touch everybody on every, every TP and, and, and almost every spinous. Okay. So this concept of which point is better is very important, but we're going to connect these two lines in another webinar, okay? You'll see what I mean in just a moment, okay? But I do want to make a point that I adjust every body on every bone in the cervicals and make sure they are freely movable. It's imperative, okay? My major way that I release the postural muscle is through one of those bend points on each side. Okay. I also clean up C5, the hyoids, C2, the TP, and the spinuses. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to integrate 
which Brad already brought up, okay, is the, the specific bend point and the line of drive and start releasing things three-dimensionally and opposing things. Okay, you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Don't panic. But listen, if it was so easy, here we go. Everybody, Everybody be doing it. That's right. Okay, so here we go. So this is a balloon. Okay. Imagine it's the cervicals to some some extent. Okay. If you notice, when just if I pushed into the middle, the middle one, the red one. Okay. What would happen? Let's assume that I put a little bo a, a, a little bo a little block. A li Remember, there's a head over here. Everything would come towards your hand. And I got a little block right, right here, just like that. Okay, that's very important that you see that because because if you just pushed into any, any of these things, it would just bend it over, right? That's not what's happening here because we have a head there that has been stabilized and a shoulder here that is also stabilized. You guys see what I'm saying? Anybody yep. see what I'm saying? Okay, good. Yep. There's a head up here. Uh, okay. That head is on a block, so it can't move. And so when you depress into this cervicals, you're going to create wedging that goes on. You're going to create Vs, so to speak. Fair enough? Yep. Great. Okay, if you understand that, and everybody's going to be happy. And that's what these lines represent, okay? So where you touch is where you create tension. So let's look at this first this first one, the black one, okay? So when I press here in this, this black one, I, I'm going to create tension here. And everything is going to move to it, okay? Everything is moving to that. My postural muscles are going this way and going this way. Everything's rising, okay? What is it doing to the neck, okay? It's lifting it from this bend point like this, creating a V like that. Can you see that? You just said that. It was true right here, okay? Where this one would create a V here, and this one would create a V here, okay? Or the rest of this going downward. Okay, from this point. Okay. You guys are going, what is he doing, man? <laughs> this is a this this slide is probably a great reason never to do QSM for the I'm trying to erase these lines so I can back to my slide here. Hang on. Okay. Oh, this is this is the way this is the way something elastic and something tensegral is a balloon would behave. Okay. And if you don't understand this, you can't release things three dimensionally. So hang just hang on in there. Okay. It's crucial to our learning curve to understand where to go into the cervical to have everything coming at you. Okay. And it, all you have to see this is the neck, okay? If I had a right neck, again, let's say I have right side up and I have a neck that is tilted upward like this. Where would I push it? C1. C1, okay. And when I so when I push into C1, it creates a V right here, okay, and it pull, and it and it drives that neck down, okay, and it releases it, okay. This would only buckle it further. The first one in black, okay. So where you contact is where you create tension or the pull to it, just like a rubber band, okay. The second thing that, that happens is the way that you go in at the line of drive 
also is into consideration of what you want may want to do. Okay. So so I just I, I just want to show you this for for without without muddying the waters any further, okay? Is that let's assume that I have a right neck here. Um, if you if you look at the middle the middle one, the orange the orange arrows here in the middle. You see that what is going to happen to I'm trying to get my pen here, sorry. What is this one going to do? Okay, versus this one. What is the difference of them? It's going into the same same point. What is what is the what is what is this one going to do here? We'll call this number 1, and this number 2. What's number 1 going to do? To the upside. Bring it, bring it towards you. It's going to bring. Let's talk I to S and S to I. It's going to bring the top I to S. Right. And the bottom one S to I. Well, it's going to bring the no matter where you push here. Okay. This everything comes around like this, the way that the head is. Is, okay, that, that's important you see, see that. And everything comes this way here. Fair enough? Up to that point. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yes. Okay. That's fair. So when I when I do number one, which one does it accentuate? We'll call A or B. Which one is it tugging on more? Number B. one tugs like which one? A. Thank you. A. It's a rubber band. Stretch it. Okay, if I push on number two at that line of drive, which one does it accentuate? B. Thank you. Okay, now you understand how I can get right sides when I want right sides and left sides when I want left sides at the problem, uh, at the cervical side. Oh. Uh, mm. So I come in... And and if you just look at 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 as C1 and C7 for now, you'll be able to start looking at there. You but there's going to be an S to I motion down to one, and an I to S motion up to the other one. And and what's going to happen is you'll start accentuating and pulling and releasing three dimensionally then. One main bend point on the side, releasing them all, I to S, S to I. And so that's what's going to happen is we're going to integrate the bend point with the line of drive, okay? So let's, let's, let's do that, okay? So when you understand the tensegral mechanics, you then control the release, which means you then can release the postural signature with opposing everything in it. And never go against it. You're just pulling everything. You're pulling A and B. You're pulling A and B the way they're supposed to be all the time. And you'll see that. Instantaneous is the word that I see with that. Okay. So let's just back up first. Instantaneously. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so here's here's the one that we started with, and just for algorithm's sake, we're gonna do a left right. I'm, I'm not telling you that's what I do after I figured it out, but it, it may for, just for today we're doing a left right. That's the algorithm. Okay, so when I'm on the left side, I want to make sure that I push into the cervicals and the with the correct line of drive to release what I want to release. Okay, and not go against stuff. Okay, so that being said, okay, my postural. Um, what did I do here? Why did I do this? Okay, so um, we have left side up, and the left side up in this situation, your choice is for the bend point C1 or C7. Okay, so uh, so let's get to the bend point for just a second. So so on this first one, left side up, what would be your bend point? I put what I have here is left side up. 
and I have a right neck. Here it is. C1. I'm Brad, I'm just giving everybody a chance to look at it. Okay. Anybody not see, anybody not think that it's C1? Are you anything? The, the head. All you got to do is know the neck and the side up. C7. Yeah. Who said C7? Who said C7? Me. Sean. Who's me? Never heard of you. Sean and Phil. Al. Uh, Allie. Allie and Sean. Allie, Allie and Sean say C7. Phil. Phil. Say C7. Who's, oh, now all of a sudden there's, there's power in numbers. I see this. <laughs> <laughs> Your big babies wouldn't get jump in. Yes, it's C7. Of course it's C7. Because the neck is already bending down. It's right. Brad, why would you push C1 down on this thing? You want to build business? What's going on here? I was looking at just the head, <laughs> not the neck. Hmm? I would push on 7 now that you enlightened me. <laughs> no, do you see it? Forget that I enlightened you. Do you see it? Yes, I was looking at the, just okay. the head, but not the neck. And we're Forget the head. Right. Got it. Forget the head, man. I'm going to show you in three weeks how to freaking kill somebody. Okay? <laughs> not not literally, of course. Okay? Right. Okay. I usually tell my patient, I'm just, I'm going to knock your head off. Okay. So here's the neck, man. I drew, drew an arrow right here. Okay, right here. Here's the neck. We're... Okay. What are you going to do with this one? Where's this one going to go? This you is a right side, right side up with a right neck. C1. You don't want to see the C1. C1. Yeah. So look, you can you can see the pattern. The pattern is is when the head and, and when the neck is on the same side up that you're working on or tilted to the same side or coplanar on the same side. Okay, AKA right side up, right neck tilt. Then it's C1. Okay. Sweet. All right. So th th I, I, I want, that's very important. If you could just get that, there, there's so many pieces that will fall into place after this, okay? In the line of drive and which, what do you do to the vertebra and so forth and so on. Um, and, and really what's happening for me is um, I, I, I see the pattern, um, I see the release, I see the response on the posture IQ, okay? I either stop or go ahead. If I go ahead, it means I go to the other side and I go to that bend point and I go through the lines of drive and I release it in a very specific pattern. Okay, Brad, I'm gonna show you in mod three, a very specific pattern of adjusting. This is what you have to release first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So um, I have the biomechanics for tensegrity. I have it where it releases everything and protects the neck. I, I have it that when we're on the side that we're on, release everything coming together, okay? And then I have the pattern on the neck, um, and that's not finished, but I'm, I'm, I'm close to, and again, when I'm, it's never finished, but I have a sequence that I'll, I can say, and that's for the first time, those last two that I can say, do this, do that, which makes our Russell. work a lot more efficient, yeah. So are you saying with that right side up, right neck, you would primarily work on C1, but you'd hit the other areas as well? No, Den Dennis, what I'd say is on this one, first of all, I'm going to let you look at this. Okay, so I just moved over that that arrow. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. Change it to, I'm going to make it light so that we can see it, right, yellow. So, um, no, the question with, with this one, 
is what would the line of drive be? First of all, what would the line of drive, what is the line of drive always at C7 to get the postural muscles? C7, T1. It's always I to S, okay? Mm -hmm. It's always right. I to S for now, okay? It's always I to S, okay? Always I to S, okay? You're always stretching that upward, 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 okay? Upward, 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 okay? But that's not the way it is with the neck, okay? So what, what would I do from C0 down to C7, okay? To protect that neck. Which direction? S to, S to I. I. S to I. What direction would I go? Okay. It from. Okay, so I'm gonna. So this is very important to hear this. If C7 protects the neck, and it also it's the direct release for the postural muscles. Okay and I'm going to I to S there, then C6, C5, C4, C3, C2, C1 are not important or as important for the postural muscles on the upside, okay? So if I go S to I, okay, which is what you just said for the neck, what does that do to the bottom side? Brings it postural up. Postural muscles. Brings it up. It pulls it. It brings it up, yeah. So when I go like this and I go S to I, the more S to I I go here, of course that's not working. This will be off. I don't know what color to use. Try this. The more S to I I go here, the more S to I, the more S to I that I go, okay, I'll put it out here, I could see it. More S to I, I go C, um, on the upside from C0 to C7. I will take care of the neck, and I will use the head as a big crowbar. What, what, when I go S to I, what does the head do? Comes up. It bends upward. It bends upward. You see how I'm using a big crowbar to release everything below? Always getting everything moving at the same time. Uh, everything. E. Happen. Just so that's what we're going to talk about, and that's what I do. So if C7 is my bend point, that brings up my postural muscles, especially on the upside, and C7 protects the neck, but I want to release all the cervicals, and I so I go S to I on them, okay? And what that does is it bends the head and it releases the downside. Release the upside, release the downside, Release it anterior, release it posterior. Simple, simple. Best game in town. Okay. All right, so I'm giving you, uh, it's 9.02. We're going to be off this call in eight minutes. I'm giving you three minutes to uh, look at those listings and quickly blast out the um, the uh, endpoint, C1, C7. Should be as simple as, is it on the same side or on the opposite side? Go. Tick tock. Hmm. All right, I'm getting up to get a drink. I'll be back in two minutes. So don't ask me any questions.
Okay. So. Okay, so what'd you get? Pretty simple? Yep. Okay, good. First. Okay, so the first one, what's it on the right side? C7. Perfect. What's the, so, the, so the other one's C1. Okay, what's C1. number two? C7. C1 and C7, right? What's number three? C1. C1, C7. Okay, so you see it, coplanar, not coplanar, and, and, and that'll make it simple for you. Then start thinking about upside, downside, <clears throat> and it's the, it's the flow from f up to that point. So you're, you're, if you're at C7, you're probably going S to I down to it, okay? You know, if it's C1, you're driving I to S up to it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so and, and, okay, great, just for now. That makes it simple. Hallelujah. Okay. Any questions? It wasn't so bad. No. Okay. So look at every postural pattern has a as a three dimensional flow pattern. Every single one. Okay. And everybody's got right, left, anteriors, posteriors, and our purpose is to try to you know figure out how to expand that thing. I tell I tell uh, my patients. I said you know. It, your body is locked down, and, and I'm like a safe cracker. I have to figure out what's the combination to get it unlocked. I said there's lots of combinations that will open the door, but there's only one that will keep it open as long as possible. There's one best choice, okay? And what I will do each time for the rest of my life and every time that they come in, try to work towards that from new information that I have, okay? And, and where I stand today, my direct experience is, is that we have an ability to do that at a very high level, okay? At a, at a level that is unprecedented, okay, compared to anybody else, okay? And that's what that stands for as a, as a Q doctor. There's not a lot of people on the call, but you're, you're the, that is here. If you're here, um, we have a, a class, okay? And to support the organization, to support the profession, to support your patients, support yourself, okay? We have another thing that you can support, and that is that we have a possibility of an elective at Palmer, okay? That is a big thing, as B.J. Palmer would say, okay? Because yep. tensegral chiropractic, okay, will have a doorway open into the educational process at a school at the fountainhead and i didn't go there okay and i don't care who picks it up you know i do but i don't okay i mean i'd love it to be life or, or palmer to be honest okay but uh and, and maybe it won't be in my lifetime okay but it could only be that if you show up to the class and other classes okay Really, I mean, think about that. Every single day, are you how, how are you banging your head against the wall? Are people saying, I'm not this, I'm not that, or you're trying to do it, okay? And the answer is, to me, at this present moment, this path. Okay? So that's important, especially if you're a Palmer graduate, and if you're on the call, to be able to get other people to realize that, okay? All right, there's only one place this conversation is going on. Okay, it's not a big matter of being big. Okay, but the profession is a problem because if you put this picture up in, to anybody in our profession, anyone in the profession, no one would see anything but a breaking down body. Okay, and that's not what I see. Okay, I see a body asking me for help. Okay, and I know how to help it. And I'm going to learn how to help it better next month and next month and tomorrow and so forth. Okay, because that's what I'm built for. Okay, mm. and, and I'm happy to have you come along with me on that ride. Okay. Okay, have a nice night. Thanks for coming.
Thanks, Russell. Thanks. Thanks, Russell. You're welcome. Thanks, Russell. Russell. Thank you.